Hello everyone. So this is my master class video for my MKTG VO2 lecture. So this is basically the first time I have a floor end in English. So I am a little bit nervous, but I will still try to be my do my best. In the following 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you several of important things. First, my feeling about this clause and what is my reflection, and some advice on those who want to choose this course but still like struggling whether I should swap or drop the course or not. So I hope I can, my advice can help you to understand more about the course and understand more about Kenneth. Let's talk about my feeling or my reflection on this class. So this semester is a little bit different from the previous semester. Um, in this semester, we have like two to three in-person face-to-face lessons first and then Due to the outbreak of the pandemic, then we all have the lessons on Zoom for the rest of the semester. So if you ask me, um, to be frank, I think that face-to-face -face lesson is much more better than Zoom lessons because you can look at each other, uh, I mean physically, and then we can talk to each other, we can discuss, and I can like answer Kenneth's question whenever I want. But in Zoom, that may be not that, um, not that perfect, I, I mean. Even though I can type in the chat box, but because um, the, the the style is different, typing and speaking in front of the class, this is a totally different experience. So if you ask me, I prefer to stay in the class, but because of the pandemic, something we cannot control. So yeah, but very luckily, Kenneth has very, very good in organizing online classes. So for example, he encouraged us to interact with each other. You can see many um, you can see most of the time many of us typing in the chat box, you know, okay. So you can see that the class is actually quite vivid. It's not really a dead class in which no one is talking. No, it is not in Kenneth's class. In Kenneth's class, we always type in the chat box. Sometimes we may type just simply the keywords, but sometimes we may share our our feelings share our insights and our opinions so i think it is quite good for us to maintain our attention by typing words in the chat box because by doing so you can keep your attention stay in class and then you will feel that oh a three hour class is not actually quite lengthy yeah for me at least for me i, I think that Kenneth's class is really really um easy to follow and then it is not stressful yeah, I won't use anything like stressful to, de to describe the class because the class is very perfect. Yes, and then Kenneth always encourage us to, you know, share the feelings or to ask questions. Yeah, I think this is very helpful for our study because most of the time we may have something that we want to know, but since, I don't know, maybe because we are a little bit scared, so we don't want to ask questions but Kenneth encourage you to do so. So whenever you have something you don't know, you don't understand, you can just maybe type in the chat box or even open your mic to tell Kenneth and he will solve your question immediately. So I'm really, really appreciate and I'm really, really, um, and I'm really happy to be in Kenneth's class for this semester, for this courses. So then now I will going to talk about the course content. Basically I will, talk about the flow, talk about what we have been through in this semester. So um, before we had the presentation, then it is just like a three hour lecture, but trust in me, you will have like maybe an hour, half an hour for your discussion. So you won't think that the class is too lengthy. No, I think that comparing to other marketing courses, Kenneth's course is the most relaxing course that I have ever heard. And then yeah, you have some discussion with your teammates so you can get a chance to know about each other. And then in the middle of the courses, um, that's time when we have some presentation stuff. So in the in the end of each lecture, we will have one to two one to two groups to do their performance, to do their presentation, and we call it the STT, that means show, tell and sell. Um yeah, and I think that it is quite surprising that even though we are doing the presentation stuff in online but our you know our classmates they're really talented they understand they know how to use some different method to make 
their presentation more interesting and to, to help us stay our attention in class. For example, some group some group um yeah some groups they may use the Kahoot and they may um play some videos and then they may use their special presentation skills and then some may even try to interact with us. May for example they will ask some questions and then they encourage someone to maybe to type in the chat box and then they can have some interaction. And in my presentation, I also use some different methods to try to like grab the attention of the class. For example, in my part, I will try to ask some simple question. You know, this question is quite simple. The reason why I asking those questions is that I want everyone could have a chance to say or to type. Because sometimes if you ask some extremely difficult, extremely difficult question, then no one is going to respond you. Trust me. But if you ask something like, okay, have you ever watched movies, something like this, then you will see a lot of message typing or saying yes, 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 yes. So you will see that, okay, those people, they are really here. They are not living, they are not um, doing other stuff, but they are paying attention to your presentation. And that will increase your confidence. So I strongly encourage you, every time when you are doing your presentation, not just talking about your part, but try to find some way to interact with the audience. You can ask some simple questions and you may yeah, and you may even walk down to the stage to find one of your classmates and then you can have some close interaction. You can ask him some question um, one by one. Okay, maybe you can ask one particular student, maybe like let's say I find okay, I say, David, could you help me to do something? So by doing so, you can drive the class attention to you and that particular person, and then they will never fall asleep. But still, because we are doing the presentation online, so no matter how better we can be, but it is still um, worse than when you can do it face to face. I mean, if you can have a face to face presentation, then the experience will be totally different. And I think that face-to-face -face presentation is very, very helpful for your life because first you can increase your confidence because you need to speak in front of the class, you need to look at their eyes, and then you need to like adjust your voice to make sure everyone can hear you. You should never be too nervous or never be too scary. You need to like encourage yourself. You tell yourself you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. Try to tell yourself, convey the message to your brain that you are the best, and then when you are going to present your part just do whatever you need to do okay stay calm and then finish your part and everything everything will be, will be perfect so that's basically all of my feeling about the presentation part and let's talk about the course content basically what we have learned from the lectures so this course is about the consumer perception consumer behavior but I think that it is some kind of like a psychologic a psychological lecture because sometimes we need to like study what consumer will think when they are making some purchase decisions. Yeah, their attitude, their per their perception, their intention. Those things are something that are quite related to the psychological analysis or psychological knowledge. And I think that it is. It is pretty interesting for me because, um, for example, we know okay when this consumer is making that decision, what theory or what psychological um, concept has applied it in his decision part. Um, for example, in my presentation, I have learned the value expression, the value expression function, and the social adjusted function. So um, let me have a quick explanation. For those, the value expressive function is that those people, they buy something only to express their value. Okay, maybe I buy a Rolex watch because I think that I'm a rich people, I think that I am a high class person. And if those for the social adjustive function part, they buy product because they want to um, have some, like to build a relationship with their friends, they want to get into a new community they want other people to think that okay they're really good at something so basically if you are the kind of fellow expressive person you don't really 
care about what others think about you. You just care about what you want to be. And if you are the social adjusted people, then you may pay more attention on how people evaluate you or how people look at how people um, how people think about you. So I think all those parts are quite interesting. To be frank, you can know that, okay, everyone, what are they thinking and why are they doing so? So I think that this course has provided me with some different knowledge or something that I have never expected. So I think if you really like to study human's mind, um, you want to know what others are thinking, you want to know why they are doing so, why they will have such behavior, and you want to apply those things in your, maybe like your marketing campaign. For example, when you are doing the case competition, maybe if you have those knowledge, you can better understand how to make your products or how to make your idea more attractive to the judge or to other, I don't know, maybe other audience. Yeah, so this call is very helpful for me, I think. Okay, so I have briefly talked about my feeling on the lecturers and now I am going to give you guys some advice or some tips for you to perform better in this course. So first, if you want to have some, if you, if you want to have a higher participation mark in the course, of course you need to be courage, you need to be, you need to be brave to speak in front of the class because it is very likely that for your guys, you will have the classes face to face and then if that is the case, you have to be brave enough to answer Kenneth's question or even to share your experience in front of the class. If you can do so, then everyone will remember who you are. And I, I know that it is never easy. Yes, I know, because I have the same feeling. The first time when I try to answer the question, I am extremely nervous. I worry about whether I will get the answers wrong or not, whether um, it will be embarrassing if I didn't get the correct answer. No, I, I have so many different feelings on, in my mind. So I'm very, very nervous. But you will get used to it. Try your best to answer as many as questions as you can. And you will find that, oh, suddenly I can answer any questions and I'm no longer nervous. Yeah, that's the case. You need to like step, you need to, you need to move your first step and then you can try to do better, better, better and better. If you are so afraid, if you don't want to get out of your, of your comfort zone, then it is not likely for you to get any improvement. So trust me, do yourself answer question every time no matter your answer is correct or incorrect, just try to make the class remember who you are. And then about, yeah, about the discussion part, when you are going to discuss with, with your teammate, try to provide as many as opinions as you can. Again, it doesn't need to be something like really, really ex excellent point or some, some outperforming um, opinions. No, just try to share your word with your teammates. Try to let them know what is what you're thinking about then maybe you can generate some useful insights and then when you are going to present your idea you will be more detailed and you will have more to to say so this is really helpful if you want to get higher participation mark so if you want to like have a higher result in the mc test or in the final exam then here is something that you need to know first I strongly suggest you to read the lecture slides before the class. That's one of the ways for you to um, better understand the course knowledge. And again, still, you need to study really, really hard if you want to get a higher grade. For example, if you want to get A or A minus, then I suggest you to, to, like, to use maybe like three to four hours per week to study the course really, really hard because sometimes you may also need to read the textbook and textbook is always useful you know sometimes the knowledge or the concepts in the natural notes is not explained that very very detailed and then there may not always be very um, there may not always be so many examples for you to understand the lecture so if you read the textbook you will have some different or some more detailed insight about okay what this topic is talking about so this is 
one of the way for you to better understand what is going on. And then, that comes to the most important part because you are supposed to have two presentation in this course. And I'm going to tell you some, or I'm going to share with you some skills on how can you improve your presentation mark. First, so first, and this is the most important thing, try to make or try to find your point of difference. Simply speaking, you need to make yourself different. You need to make people remember you after you have given after you have given your presentation. So there are so many ways for you to do it. For example, you can dance, you can sing a song, and you may you may even do some role play. So let's take me for an excellent example. In my presentation, I try to role play a CEO and I pretend that I'm giving a speech in front of the press, the public, and I do it really, really like professional. I try to dress up myself in suit and try to speak really, really like, okay, so good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to give you do, 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 do. Yeah, try to address my tone and address my body language, my gesture to make it like really professional. So if you are good at doing such thing, then don't waste your talent. Let's say if you are good at dancing, just dance in front of the class. It's not a big deal. No one is going to love you after the class. If you can make your class be love, that means that you are successful in your presentation. Yeah, because you have drive the attention from the audience. And then all the, all the people, I mean your classmates, they will remember you, they will remember, oh, that person is really brave enough because he or she can give some wonderful performance in class. And maybe I need to learn from him so when they are giving you like the peer evaluation or the group evaluation, they will give you or your group a higher mark because you have left a good impression on them. And the next part that's also important is that try to memorize the script. That means that when you are giving the presentation, if it is face to face, don't look at the script. I have seen so many of my group of my classmates, okay, they use their mobile phone like yeah, when they're giving the presentation, they something like this. Okay, today I'm going to talk about this topic, and then so moving on to the next topic, blah 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 blah. blah. Their eye is always on their digital device, and they don't even look at the classmates. This is something I strongly this encourage because if you do so, that means that you are not really respecting your classmate, and that means that you are not well prepared for your presentation. So try to memorize the script and then try to give or try to do your presentation in the most native and natural way. And you can feel free to contact me or maybe you can leave me some comments in the comment section below and I will try my best to solve your questions. So thank you for your time. Hopefully I can see you guys later. Goodbye.